Live from New York. It's a show that's 100% right about several things. <laughs> it's first things first. <laughs> Today, say hello to the newest member of the Kansas City Chiefs. Carson Wentz. I always like you cut of his jib. What? He's gotten a she's, you know, he's gotten unfair treatment. By we him. will not be bringing <laughs> back some of those today. Okay. That ends today. He's Meanwhile, now granted, a immobile national champion with limited ceiling didn't work out when we took <laughs> Mac Jones. But can I interest you in JJ McCarthy? <laughs> <laughs> Why one person here says the Patriots offseason is a disaster and it's not me. It's and finally, oh my goodness, it's a special <laughs> edition of the warmest segment in all of sports. It's King of the Hill. Oh, alongside Chris Broussard, I'm Kevin Wilds. Nick, any surprises in King of the Hill? New person at the top of the hill. And it's not the who America thinks so I'm going to put. It's, 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 it's a good. dew covered. The mountain wasn't even hill. close to this volume. Well, the mountain, once you get there, you hold on tight. This is a dew co- covered hill. Yeah. It's slippery. I tell Still you that. Still in the afternoon, huh? Yeah, in the springtime. Yeah. Are we dropping hits? Oh, it could be yo. It could be anybody. Okay. Who knows? We'll see. Okay. All, right. All in due time. <laughs> well done. Dusty, yeah? <laughs> we start with Iowa LSU. Caitlin Clark dominant. 41 points. She made nine threes, dished out 12 assists. Iowa wins the rematch against LSU and is headed to the Final Four. Brew, did Caitlin Clark silence her doubters last night? Well, I, I'm not sure she had many doubters. Um, I mean, we all know about Jay Williams' comment. She can't be great unless she wins a ring. And I, I think even deep inside, he would walk that one back. Yep. I don't think he has publicly. Sure. But great. If you want to say the GOAT, okay, that's another debate. We'll yep. get to that a little later. But great? She's clearly great. Saying Caitlin Clark's not great is like saying Einstein wasn't smart. Wow. I mean, it's, it's, she's that right, she's that great. All right, <laughs> I'm, proud of, that. I'm proud of that. No. <laughs> no, but I think one thing, because we can't assume, even though obviously the popularity of the game for women is, is skyrocketing, we can't assume everybody knows what her game is like. All right, so in specifically asking me about last night, a lot of people may think she's just a scorer because she broke the scoring record, mm-hmm. right? But when you saw last night, she is a great passer, too. She had, in addition to the 41 points, the 12 assists, the game before against Colorado, she had 29 points, 15 15 assists. assists. She's averaging 10 assists in the tournament. And she is not just – and I don't don't mean this in a negative way on these guys, but like an Allen Iverson, Russell Westbrook – who would pass, they would be looking for a bucket, draw attention, double, triple team, and kick it to a teammate kind of as a last resort for assist. She is a real playmaker. Like, she has court vision. She throws pinpoint passes, sometimes even kind of passing players open. Like, she is a great passer and in addition stuff. to a – Absolutely. Yep. So, I think you had to see that. And also, if there was any doubt, because some people were throwing out Juju Watkins, Paige Beckers, mm-hmm. at who's the best player in the country? It's clearly Caitlin Clark. On a night when Angel Reese was on the court, mm-hmm. who played well, yeah. but she's not as good as Caitlin Clark, uh, Beckers and Juju played later that night. And Beckers was great, and Juju played well too. But clearly, Caitlin Clark is the best player in the country. And this graphic kind of sums oh. it up. Look at the number of teammates. So these are the top 50 recruits when they were coming out of high school, like a four or five star. Yeah. Think of that way. Top 50 recruits. Iowa has two, including Caitlin Clark. She's got one teammate. One that teammate was who was top 50. Recruit. LSU, five of them. Yeah. UConn, seven. South Carolina, seven. Yeah. And she's running through the tournament. So this is so. somewhat like a Larry Bird when he carried. It's not quite as much because Iowa's been a good program, mm. but the way he carried Iowa or Indiana, Indiana State, State in 1979. So I thought so. she showed all of that last so, night. And, and I listen, Kim Mulkey is getting some criticism today, a little bit of it fair, of why didn't you switch up the defensive scheme, maybe a flauge on her more. Haley obviously was having a really rough – Haley had a rough tournament. I like Haley Van Lith. Yeah. I liked her attitude last year. I liked the way she – Stood up for her teammates this year. She shot 20% for the tournament and had a rough game offensively last night and defensively had no answers. So maybe Mulkey could have switched some things up. But one of the reasons it wasn't just blitz Caitlin Doubler is because of what Bruce's talking about. She's such a good passer and yep. such a willing passer that wouldn't have necessarily solved your problem. This was a legendary performance by a legendary player. Mm. This Caitlin Clark has two career 
40-point double-doubles or triple-doubles. They have both come in the Elite Eight in back-to-back years. Last year against Louisville and then last night. I, Wilds, your point yesterday that I didn't mean to but jumped on you a bit on Dismissed as far it. as – Well, <laughs> as far as – I wasn't really trying to call you a fool. <laughs> I, w- I didn't like the discussion that I was seeing, which was essentially saying – her greatness is predicated on this result. Because to me, her greatness was already established. But part of that point is correct, which was you could argue this was the biggest game of her career. Mm -hmm. Bigger than the national title game. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but because this team had beaten her, because everyone came back, because, because this was a team, because now she already was, instead of last year, she was player of the year, but the story and legend was growing. Now she is a legend. She's broken the records. If you then have the same team beat you back-to-back years, but this one before even the Final Four, it's going to feel a little funny yeah. that that's the way the Iowa career ends. Instead, she had one of, I don't think it's the, but one of the greatest games of her career. And here's the other thing I'm going to say about Caitlin Clark, which I think is so cool for women's sports and for sports in general, but particularly this moment for women's sports. I would argue for a decade, young basketball players, not all, but many, have said, God dog it, I want to be Steph Curry. And no one has succeeded, hmm. and now she has. Oh, that's a good take. We have seen so many got male she players plays very be like, I like want to play like that guy. Mm-hmm. I want to take off the bounce, unbalanced, deep yep. threes, and have them be good shots. And no one has succeeded doing it. Trey Young's and trying. Trey Young, that, I was Trey Young's bring trying. Up Trey. And he's not close he's because not, he's not efficient. Correct. He doesn't win. Right. And his 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 shooting. If you Trey Young, his assist numbers are excellent. Right. His shooting percentage will shock you if you actually look yeah, at it. Right. Even That's on those true. great playoff runs, his yep. three point numbers. She's she's doing it. Yep. She is doing it as like it, it, and it's to me that is the cool part of this. It wasn't. It was that. Basketball players, men and women, or boys and girls in this case, young people, looked at Steph Curry, and a lot of them said, I'm not going to be the biggest person out there. I'm not going to be the most athletic. How can I be the most dominant? And the first person to kind of pull that sword from this stone it's good take. Is, good take. is Caitlin Clark. Yep. And, that, and that, that to me is so dope that she was 11 years old, I would imagine, watching Steph Curry be like, that's the game that I'm going to do. While a lot of 11 and 12-year-old boys were doing the same thing, yeah. and yep. she nailed it first. You know what I like to brew? The makes are obviously the makes. She had a few misses that were still intimidating, I think, to LSU. (laughs) And it's very Steph-like, where it's like, I'm going to space the floor so deep. And we see Dame do it, too. So wide and so deep, where it's like, now you're going to have to cover me out here. If I make it, you're like, oh, demoralized. Like, what can I do? If I miss it, there's still so much space for me to operate. Um, I thought it was great. Brew, do you have a final word, or do you want to talk about my take again from yesterday? I want to hear your take (laughs) from this one. So now we move on to... uh, where does Caitlin belong in this ranking of all-time players, and does she need a title? So yesterday I argued that she does. Here's sporting news. There's a lot of different rankings. We picked sporting news um, of best player, women's college basketball players ever. Number one, Brianna Stewart. She had three players of the year, won four titles with UConn. Cheryl Miller, Shemika Holtzclaw, Diana Taurasi, Candace Parker, Brittany Griner had two players here, only won one. Now, Caitlin Clark has one player of the year last year. We expect her to win it again. She's going to win it this year. So that's, that'll be But it'd be, be weird if she had zero titles. So, yeah. here's why, so here's why I don't think she needs to win a title. I want to... I want To be the GOAT? Well, I, that- I think to be in... I think to where if you say... I, I want to be clear here. I don't look at women's basketball like hockey where there is an undisputed, clear greatest ever. I don't look at it like the NBA, where there is an undisputed, clear, you can only make an argument for three guys at Mm -hmm. most. I think that that list is a fair list, and I also think some people might throw Sue Bird on there. I think some, you know what I mean? Like That list is, it, it is a lot of people. The reason that I think Caitlin is already in the conversation is, and this is why I get frustrated with the count the ring stuff, Let's show that graphic again if we could. And again, in your mind's eye, imagine that there's a two for Naismith Player of the Year for Caitlin because she's going to win it this year. And then I'm going to add a column. And that's WNBA teammates. 
And obviously, Cheryl is in a unique spot because the WNBA didn't exist. So take she had the, tremendous team. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's what I would Cynthia imagine. Cooper, right. It, it, Cynthia McGee Cooper, sisters. who might have been the greatest WNBA player ever. But, oh, yeah. Okay. So what you're going to notice is, oh, so wait. The only person on the list who doesn't have multiple titles is Brittany Griner. She's the only person on the list whose entire starting five wasn't Fair. future pros. Caitlin Clark, now again, Caitlin's number could grow greater than zero because, you know, when her class graduates, some of them could go on. But to me, Brew, she what she did last year, and I, and I apologize for going along, I just want your opinion on this. Beating South Carolina last year was more impressive than if someone else beat South Carolina and then Caitlin won the national title. South Carolina going into that game had won 42 straight games. Since that game, they've won 36 straight games. Over the last two years, South Carolina is 72 and 1. The one loss was to Caitlin Clark. South Carolina has pros all over it. Last year, the number one pick of the draft. This year's got more, more people. She has, and we can show you her numbers in her biggest games. If we can pull that up real quick, Hubs, in Elite Eight Final Four National Championship games, what she's averaging. It's, she, it's not that she hasn't shown up. It's not that she hasn't been great in the biggest moments. Here's what she's done in her four career biggest games. Oh, pretty good. Yeah. And so that's, yes, a national title brew would be the, I don't want to say the icing on the cake because I know it's more than that. But the circumstance in a team sport yeah. has to be a great factored argument. into it. It's a great it, it, argument. Bruce is going to be with me. Watch this. Yeah, I, I, I was going to say, look, it is because we're talking GOAT argument. now. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday we argument. were talking established all-time yeah. great, which you and I uh -huh. were like, she's already that, regardless mm, yeah. of what would have happened last night. GOAT is a different conversation. And, look, I, I am not – I don't claim to be an expert – on women's basketball history. All right, I don't have the airtight, foolproof, indisputed, undisputable, or indisputable argument for the women's goal comes. like I do for like the I men's goal. Right, right, George? Really right, that one's yeah. airtight. There's that no debate. Airtight. Yeah. All right, but for this, what comes to my mind, the person that comes to my mind is Cheryl Miller. Me too. Because she was just, I mean, she won two championships. Now, she won them when she was freshman and sophomore yeah. when she had those great teammates, but she still won it. She was just legendary and mythical. I'm not going to sit here and act like I was watching her Correct. all the time in the early 80s, okay, or mid-80s. But I'll say this, and I have watched, you know, a, a decent amount of the women's college game and pro game. Caitlin Clark is the best player I've ever seen. And I'm mm. keeping it to college. Mm. I'm not compared to WME. She's the best player I've seen. And you're right. She is like Steph. She's very much like Steph Curry. I mean, he's a great passer, too. You don't see it as much because of their offense. But she's very much like Steph, except, and we were talking about this before the show, she's the equivalent of probably a guy that's 6'6". In, the, in men's Correct. basketball because she's six feet tall in women's basketball. All yeah. right. So it's like that's why she fills up the box score and not like, you know, Steph doesn't really do it because of his size. And so I think she's the best I've seen. However, Nick, there's not a basketball discussion, I don't think, where we don't put when we're talking about goat, where we don't include rings. It's not the end all be all, but we include rings. Right. It's, I can't really say I can't say. She's the greatest college player ever, even though that's what my eyes tell me, but, unless she's but got a oh, ring. But and you, Iowa's not Indiana State. No, I'm not Burke. saying I was Indiana Iowa's State. Big, Vivian Stringer was there. You know, they've been a, a good program. I'll be honest. They're I didn't not know UConn. Vivian Stringer was there. Yeah, shout was, out to Brew for They're not UConn that. or Tennessee, no, but that. they have been but a good this program. This is where Wilds, and this is – Wilds making fun of me because he was like, your brain works like this on all things. Mm -hmm. like, like that, that this is – that I am – not just process over results on a lot of things, but also taking things to its furthest logical conclusion, which is if, if we are saying you can't be in the discussion without a ring, then we, and we are saying then take it further. So if she averaged 60 a game. Yeah. No, but so, so wait. If I'll she, be impressive. If she scores 60 and gets knocked out by UConn. Pistol uh, Pete averaged like 40. Yeah. Nobody ever said no, he was no, great. I understand you know, that, but that's a different, that's, to me, that's a different story because we, we were saying that he was playing a selfish brand of basketball, that he wasn't playing winning basketball. Nobody thinks that. Like, the, do, do you guys buy into at all anything that the most impressive win in the women's game over the last two years yes. was Caitlin's win over South Carolina? It just came around early. Yeah. But here's the thing, Nick. If she averaged, sure. to your, your point, 60. 
then you look at it like, okay, there's a clear gap. Well, the other names on that list that, that you sh- both of you showed, they're great well, players in their own yeah. right too. Now I think Caitlin is better, so, but it's not she, like you look at them already, like man. They not I know, but she it. already has by a huge margin the highest scoring tournament ever last year. Mm -hmm. If she makes the final this year, she's going to break her own record in that. So, like, she's going to have the two highest scoring tournaments ever. I guess my point is it's like quarterback. She went two games. Say it again. She's got to win two more games. But South and then Carolina, she gets South Carolina, so she has to. So she has the number to, one to be the greatest what? ever and surpass I, all of them. I'm just well, I, again. I'm not even saying. By the way, if she wins, she is the greatest ever. What I'm saying is she uh, that. If you you cannot have the conversation about who the greatest female college basketball player is without including her name, there is not a definitive clear cut number one. I agree that's with you fine, on but Cheryl the- Miller, but that is just because it's when I did my NBA list, I was able to go back and watch stuff. I can't with Cheryl. I just right, trust. Right. I trust people, right? I did. I I was at Shamika Holdsclaw's Final Four game when the Jolly Girl hit all the threes. I watched women's college basketball growing up. I was at some of those games, so I feel like I actually know a lot about the UConn and Tennessee teams. I feel like she's the best I've seen, mm-hmm. and. The idea that, well, if this South Carolina team that has lost once in three years be- beats her after she beat them last year, she's out of the discussion. It's tight. Well, she, she, she can be in the discussion, in the discussion. but that's going to be, I it would think, be a disappointment, a, would it not? Yeah, I think that's going to be a point that she can't overcome in the discussion. Okay. South, is that I mean, South she Carolina's doesn't have any win title. South Carolina's the best team. They've always they've been the best My team. They should have won it last year. Friday, 9 o'clock, UConn, Iowa. Uh, Okay, talking about Angel Reese now, 17 points, 20 rebounds, and four blocks after the game. She opened up about the mental toll of criticism and scrutiny that she's faced. Take a listen. I've been through so much. I've seen so much. I've been attacked so many times. Death threats. I've been sexualized. I've been threatened. I've been so many things, and I've stood strong every single time. And I just try to stand strong for my teammates because I don't want them to see me down and like not be there for them. So I just want to always just know like I'm still a human. Like all this has happened since I won the national championship. And I said the other day, I haven't had peace since then. Brew your reaction. Well, it's just very sad that, I mean, winning the national championship should be one of the highlights of her life. And for her to say, she hasn't had peace since then. It's just, it's just terrible. It's heart wrenching. All right. Um, and we know last year there was a controversy, and that's to me kind of when it began. The start her, when they were doing dead. this in right. front of Caitlyn, and people it. jumping all over her mm. and saying nothing about Caitlyn Clark yep. doing it. That was racism, and I think it was classism too. Because if she was some suburban black girl who was you know, acted differently, I don't know if it would be as, as people would be on her as much. So I think it's unfortunate she's going through that. There was the article in the L.A. Times yep. that compared the, the, uh, uh, LSU, the LSU players to dirty debutantes. And I don't think the author, the writer, meant it in a pornographic way. But people said, once you Googled it, and Kim Mulkey said it, you Google it, it, it turns to pornography. So I don't think he really meant it that way. I don't think he knew it. Because that wasn't the thing that came to my mind. I, I just thought, he, okay, that. he's trying to turn a phrase. Mm-hmm. But that is, she's the reason. Not that, you know, because she's kind of the face of that team, and he was looking negatively at that team because of what he thinks about her. And for her to have to go through that, like Kim Mulkey said, it, it is terrible that college kids have to go through this. Now, I will say this. As you become more popular and as women's basketball is becoming more and more popular, they will also take get some of the negatives that come with popularity in yeah. terms of – I mean, LeBron James is the greatest example. He is – a, an awesome player, obviously, but with his stature has come a whole bunch so, of criticism and scrutiny that he has to have. It should be different with college kids, and a lot of times it is. Like, when I wrote, I would not criticize college kids or high, the same certainly way high school. Yeah, yeah, the same way pro. They're not getting paid. I know they are now with NIL, but they're not professionals. And so it should be different in that regard. But it's just, you know, it's unfortunate – 
And a lot of what she's talking about also is social media. So the, okay, not boom. just traditional so that's, media. So that's, I think that's almost all of it. I, don't, I think the LA Times article was, you know, maybe the straw that broke the camel's back publicly. I, so here is, I, I say this as, and I don't, I'm not trying to be preachy, and I empathize with Angel Reese, but I, my, my two older kids are sandwiched around her age. I have an 18-year-old and a 25-year-old. And this is what I say to them. This is what I say to young people watching. Adults watching too, but particularly young people. You gotta log off. And I'm not blaming Angel Reese at all. But those death threats, the sexualization, I bet 98% of it, if not 100% of it, did not come from her walking down the street and someone saying it to her. It is people who live in your phone who are terrorizing you. Right. And I say this as someone who has been in some ways in the public eye for 20 years, okay? When I started, the so social media did not really exist. It grew as during my time on, on the air. And about six years ago, I logged off. And by that, I mean I didn't stop posting, right. but I stopped reading anything that is written about me because it was driving me crazy. Mm -hmm. It was negatively impacting my mental health, yep. my interactions with other people, how I thought of myself as a grown man who opted into the spotlight. For young people who are kind of all of a sudden celebrities, nobody's prepared for it. Right. And anyone that's like, oh, ignore it, I'm here to tell you it's not ignorable if you read it. The human beings are not equipped to deal. For all of human civilization, you did not have to deal with strangers saying terrible things right. to you. We didn't evolve to know how to deal with it. All of a sudden, anyone in the public eye gets it. And I'm here to tell you it's awful for you. And that if you if you consume it, right? And, and if you consume it, it will negatively impact right. you. The problem is, Wilds. The flip side to it is the dopamine kick of the stranger saying good things to right. you. And in order to get that, you got to take the other. But it's killing kids, literally. literally. It's literally killing kids. I, and so I just I feel so terribly for her. Right. And I, but yeah, I, I, I just want one yeah. thing because you you did a lot of like you have to log off. And I just want to contrast it to what Bruce said about the L.A. Times article. The L.A. Times article was out of bounds. The author apologized yep. in its old school print media. And several people in the old school print media and on social media was like, that's out of bounds. Yep. The wow. LSU coach like, that's out of bounds. Everyone's like, that's out of bounds. And the L.A. Times writer apologized. I said, that was out of bounds. The stuff that Angel Reese is going to have has to deal with on her phone is 100x. Yes. Worse than that. Yeah. And there's no one there saying that's out of bounds. So there is part of it where you're saying log off. There is a responsibility. And this is way out of sports. And we apologize. But give us a minute. There is a responsibility to companies that are making money off of this. that are making billions of dollars in Silicon Valley to policing and regulating this. The whether it is by uh, legislative action or simple disincentives that need to be bo uh, cooked into these programs. When the, the, the fact that LA Times, I just thought it was interesting, the fact that LA Times was out of bounds and everyone's like quickly squashed it, right. and the amount of stuff that was just popping up last night. Well, and so when she says sexualized, I, like what, what she's talking about is a, like, like whack a mole, you can't block them all. People on the internet photoshopped her SI pictures into pornographic images. Oh, wow. You know what I those types of, the, and that is just, you know what I mean, one of the, the, and the death threats are too many, you know, bot accounts to count. And I know from afar, people can see it and say, well, you, they're not real death threats. You do, are you actually afraid? And I am telling you, as a, a near, near 40 year old man who opted into the spotlight, that it was driving me crazy. I can't imagine if I was a 20-year-old kid who just, you know, got thrust into the spotlight all of a sudden, and I have political figures and anonymous people, everyone telling me what an awful person I am. It would drive you crazy. No, she, she, you're absolutely right about logging up. Like, I don't pay attention to, to the criticism. I don't, I don't, you guys know I'm not on social media. Like don't that. Even I post. Wild. Right, I, I, <laughs> I post. But human beings are not meant, this was something somebody told me, and I, I totally believe it. 
for excessive, I'm talking about super excessive praise or criticism. or criticism. And that is what she's getting, incredibly excessive criticism on social media. And it's easier for us, especially me, because we didn't grow up, even yep. you guys didn't grow up with social media. She did. To her, it's like television. Like for us, we can't even imagine not having television. To, to them, that age, that's what it's like. But she has to do it for her mental health, as yep. you said. Uh, more first things first. Right after this, we're going to talk about the Patriots. Is that good for your mother? <laughs> Welcome back to the show. Patriots currently have the number three pick, about $47 million in cap space that we can't spend, and I guess a favorite replacement for Mac Jones. GM Elliot Wolf is reportedly, quote, pushing hard for J.J. McCarthy of Michigan. Oh. Nick, your reaction to the team of the 21st century's moves in the post-Belichick era? I mean, up to this point, this, this offseason has been just a disaster. Well, so here, yeah. listen, I'm not saying Mayo's the wrong hire. I'm saying not doing a search is the wrong decision. Not looking outside the building, not conducting interviews and then landing on Gerard Mayo was a mistake. And then they did the exact same thing for the GM. And if you're not familiar with how the GM was hired, let me tell you. Jonathan Kraft, who's the son of Robert Kraft, mm -hmm. Jonathan now seems to be in charge. He decided Elliot Wolf, who's the son of Ron Wolf, who used to run the Packers, that Elliot Wolf was the best man for the job. And Elliot Wolf decided his new right hand man should be Matt Groh. That's the son of Al Groh, who used to coach <laughs> the Jets. So th that's the GM, Elliot Wolf. Matt Groh and Gerard Mayo are going to run the draft. And then Mayo coaching staff was filled out by first-time defensive coordinator Demarcus Covington, whose entire career has been spent in New England. And then they did go outside of the building for Alex Van Pelt, mm -hmm. who just got fired by the Browns. To supplement that offense that Alex Van Pelt's going to coordinate, they added who? I'm waiting. Kendrick. No, no, he was already on the team, no, right? No, brought him back. Oh, he had been on the team before. Yeah. You guys couldn't close the deal on Calvin Ridley because yeah. Elliot Wolf couldn't negotiate better than Ridley's girlfriend. And and right now, <laughs> the best I can tell is what happened there. He didn't and so go. I don't. I, and now it looks like Elliot Wolf, who it said he's going to make make the call on draft day, wants to hire a low upside, high floor, undefeated national champion quarterback with limited physical like attributes, that, which is exactly what they did four years ago. So I say it's gone poorly. Not but here, here's the thing. Maybe. Well, we don't we know about any of those guys. Thank you. I mean, we, 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 Gerard Mayo, I, I think he'll work out. We don't know. But we're I, looking at, oh, D'Amico Ryans, Antonio Pierce. Yeah. He looks Bell like he could be Bell. linebacker. He could be good like those mm -hmm. guys. And let's keep it real. With Bill Belichick and a stable organization, they hired uh, uh, Pat, Matt Patricia as an offensive Which is why coordinator. Shouldn't they then so go we can't say. The building no, my something? point is they were making disastrous moves before this new regime. Oh, so funny. I'm just saying, let's give the new regime a chance. You're right; they haven't been able to sign anybody. They re-signed some of their guys, but this is a long-term project. So I'm not really ready to crush them yet. Wilds, I'll you. give them a chance to see what they do. Remember when I coined the phrase "defense wins championships"? Uh huh. <laughs> Our defense was great last year. It's kind of inarguable. You that brought we back great. some of those guys. Yeah. 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 But, but Judon was the out for half the yeah, year. Yeah. And Christian Gonzalez, who could have won defensive rookie of the year, he was out early in the year. Both will come back healthy. Uche back on yep. a one-year deal. So the defense will be excellent, which is why you might have thought I was on the drive for seven, right? The, our seventh Super Bowl yeah. trophy. Right seven here. Seven wins. Boom. <laughs> you see it. The drive for five. Over-under is at four and a half. <laughs> <laughs> the drive for five. You're going to be happy with five wins. Well, I'll be happy. And everyone who believed in me when I said take the Patriots <laughs> over, we're on the drive for five. And honestly, I am not trying to win the Super Bowl. It would be nice to win the Super Bowl. Yeah, I'm not going to try to microwave it because we did have a rookie quarterback come in and lead us to the playoffs. But it wasn't the long-term solution. I would be happy with the drive for five or a little lionsy. A little like, ooh, ooh, they're coming. They're they going to be good. There, there's, a, there's a little bit of energy you know, I there. Hear you. Next year, they're going to be great. Wild. And the drive that would be great. With, with cap starts room, today. That would be good. Yeah, with cap room the, next year. Uh, okay. We got I, cap room right now. We no, literally I know, have but, money. But no. if, you, if you show people, as you what? said, we're coming. Oh, they're building something. And then you have all that but cap room. But we have $47 million. Like, hey, want 47 Well, because people no, look at you like they're, they're a joke right now. 
Yeah. You got to change well, wait that the image. Drive for five and I and I just I just want to be very <laughs> clear before we move five. on. I am not trying to say that I think Gerard Mayo is going to be a bad head right. coach. I am, I think he's an unknown for everybody. What I am saying is I think any coaching search where they leave out the search part is a mistake. It was it was preordained. It was preordained by a regime that evidently the Crafts I had so little taste for. They made a ten-part documentary. The last five parts were tearing him down. Well, like and so and now it's his <laughs> protege. Like I don't. I, it just doesn't seem quick like a question. Yeah. About this this conflicting news stories, which I found a little bit uh, disheartening. Uh, from the NFL NFL.com, the headline was in February: Patriots executive Elliot Wolf to have final say during yeah. 2024 NFL draft. That, so, so why, what's he pushing for? Right. That's yeah. what exact. That, so that's I, a weird thing because it's and that first thing wasn't a report. He said it. Oh. He was at the podium I've and he said, "I have say. final yeah. say." And so now, it's like, I have final say on what I eat for breakfast. I don't know. Like, and I really want eggs. Like, all right. <laughs> he's got to wait <laughs> and see well, if well, Robert. Well, I mean, well, Jonathan against. Kraft, who he wants. Okay. Moving on. Nothing I like more than a nice off-season training piece of content. Oh, it's Saquon visiting some people and uh, walking the hallways and meeting. You know what? I'm going to take this back, Dusty. That was pretty lame. <laughs> what? The picture? The whole thing. All right. Just we- like walking in the hallways and just standing there doing nothing? Wild. I like to see the ball flying through the air, some quick cuts. Well, we don't have a ton of time here. Sorry. So before you ask Brew's question, I just want to issue a challenge. I wrote it down. Brew, do the entire segment. It's a short segment. Without saying, quote, supernatural natural fun. <laughs> challenge. <laughs> Go ahead. What's the no, question? The, what, question what is is, the question is, are people sleeping on the Eagles? I don't know about people because they seem to be a popular choice to win the NFC East. But Nick is sleeping on them. Nick is sleeping on them sleeping because on of what jail. happened last what was year. I don't know what it was, but something at the end of the season. Oh, weird. Look, <laughs> I know they've let some guys go, but Reddick's gone. Okay, you got Bryce Huff. Mm-hmm. All right. Huff's I think in the draft, they're going to – I imagine they're going to try to draft some defensive players, right? Some cornerbacks, maybe linebackers. They got three picks in the first 53. And Saquon, I love Saquon here. I love it. The first time, now obviously he's got to stay healthy. That has been a big problem for him. But it was a problem for Christian McCaffrey before he got to the Niners. What about the defense? And the weapons. What about the defense? No, the the, the defense will, that's what I say. They got to address that on draft. Okay, but that's second worst. Right, so that's the the problem, Brew, is these two graphics. And you can explain away the first one with supernatural funk. That's fine. But I don't know how, pardon me. You're going to explain away this one, which is the whole year. They were I'll awful. give you two words. What? Vic Fangio. <laughs> Drew. Defensive. Hold on. They lost their when, – when they lost their OC and DC, it was a big deal. Yes. On that side of the yes. table. Yes. Well, now they brought in Kellen Moore on the is offense. Is he good? I, I think he's good. Based on? I, I think, well, based on what he did in Dallas. The, the Dallas just had a Dallas. better year with Allen. And you know what? what in Dallas? What? They always had a nice run game. Okay. Ask Tony Pollard okay. yep. if he likes Kellen Moore. He like, had his best can years can of his career question? under Kellen Moore. Hold on. And Saquon Guys, Barkley is better than right, Tony so Pollard. I'm going to say something because uh, I don't okay. know that Kellen Moore is good, but it's going to be Sirianni's offense anyway. Here's we know Fangio's good. Th- oh, come on. He oh. had a bunch of break dancers in Miami. Break what did he, what he have in Denver? What do you have, guys? In the last decade, Vic Denver Fang- was good. In- no, they were not. Hey, if you because sc- Russ couldn't score seventeen points, he they would have been no, undefeated no, no. or whatever the he stat is. He was gone is. by then. He wasn't there with Russ. That was oh. that was uh, EJ Evero. <laughs> Edit that out. That, that the defense got better when Fangio left and EJ Evero came in. Well, that, do you, remember it do you think Vic Fangio is not a good defense? All I'm coordinator. saying is, Mangini in the last eight him. years, he's had a good defense once. Mangini. That's all I'm saying. You got to buy in. But he's had a good defense one, once. In the They're going to be years. improved defensively. Mangini like we got to. Welcome to Kansas City, Carson Wentz. The one-time Eagles, Colts, Commanders, Rams quarterback (laughs) will now serve as Mahomes' backup. Nick, we went through all the tape, Josh and I, once we were done grinding the All-22, we went back and grinded some of your takes on Carson Wentz. Mm -hmm. I was surprised. 
Doesn't seem like you're a huge fan. No, you go into a season. Well, as I Carson wish we Wentz, had a clip. You, as you, you put together a reel. No, the, I didn't really do that. No, no, you go into a season as Carson Wentz your starting quarterback. You're screwed. And like the this is a lot of the tape that you're going to have of me being most critical of Carson Wentz was when he was a Colts quarterback and it looked like they were going to make the playoffs. And some people on other networks, maybe this one as well, but mostly other networks were talking about you know Carson Wentz, one of those underappreciated players in the sport. And then he threw, I think, four interceptions against two in Jaguars team to ruin the season. And then Jim Irsay said he has to leave. Then he went to the Washington and he said yep. they have to leave. Um, but I might have to stop sharing my mock drafts with America. Oh, because this move just confirms the direct pipeline I have to the Chiefs front office, mm-hmm. and so I don't want to reveal any of the Chiefs draft plans. Because, Wilds, what have I been encouraging the Chiefs to do for three years at the backup quarterback spot? Who have I wanted them to sign? I wanted to sign Cam Newton Why? for the quarterback dives. And- for the quarterback sneaks. Yeah. One goal line. Because Mahomes won't do it. Last four years, Brew, the Chiefs no have run. Dusty checked it yeah. since Mahomes' kneecap popped out of socket. They have run zero quarterback sneaks. The Eagles run it 48 times. <laughs> Literally. Uh, so now you have a guy to do it. Hey, Cam Newton's too busy podcasting and stuff. That's fine. Now you have a guy to do it. Carson Wentz is going to be the quarterback sneak guy and the goal line guy. That's perfect. Okay. Great use of resources. Costs no money. This is his specialty. I'm all for it. Look at this vintage Carson Wentz at the goal line. <laughs> go get it, big fella. Oh, like that's that. exactly <laughs> right. There we go. That, that's perfect. I mean, maybe. What do you mean, maybe? Definitely. Why else they sign him? That's obviously what they did. Okay. Are we missing the elephant in the room? What's the elephant? And maybe, look, maybe I'm overly optimistic. And I know Carson Wentz, locker rooms haven't liked him. Yeah. But you guys know I'm a I'm big on being humbled. Oh, I thought so. Maybe intangible. he's been a bit humble. Yeah, that too. But th- he's only 31 years old. Yeah. This is an opportunity for him to sit at the feet of Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes and perhaps put himself in position oh. to be with another team in the future. Wow. Oh. We, he's got some talent. He's not obviously going to go there and disrupt. He can sit there and watch the greatest that we've seen to do it. And Andy Reid, like, I, 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 I get what you're saying, and you're right. Let him do quarterback sneaks. But this is an opportunity for oh, Carson to learn. You saying and he's still young. Not in the, He's not going to be – Chiefs quarterback. No, I know that. But do you think he's going to get a start? Could get a starting no, job no, after this? No, no, no. I think he just improves his image and reputation. Oh, wow. And maybe you know, at the end of the year, if they sit Mahomes for the last game, he goes in, plays. Yeah, you know, and, he and, could get an opportunity. Okay. And in all seriousness, while I do think for quarterback sneaks and goal line, there should be a Carson Wentz package, so to speak, because they won't run Mahomes on him. I also think for any team that is. S Bob or S Bob adjacent, there is a real risk associated with your backup quarterback being a guy that has never taken an NFL snap. And we see, you know what I mean? Having your backup quarterback be the fifth round draft pick that yeah. you're developing, that to me is either for bad teams or third string quarterbacks on, you know, contending teams. I, if Mahomes had to miss a game that mattered, again, I, my feelings on Carson Wentz have never changed, and I've always been right on him. But he can obviously. Win you a game. He, he can play, and the moment's not too big for him for a game, right. like a quarterback right. who's never. Last year, the backup was Bukele and Oladukan for the Chiefs, and I like them both those guys, but they hadn't played in the NFL before okay. after Gabbard. Should the NFL fear the Jets? No. <laughs> Son Reddick had 27 sacks for the last two years with the Eagles, and now he's ready to rush through whatever expectations you might have for the Jets. <laughs> Take a listen. I'm happy to be around a group of guys like this, a, a talented roster such as this one. Um, it's going to be fun, man. I don't think anybody's ready for what's about to happen, but it's going to be fun, and it's going to be fun to watch as well. Oh, man, stay. I don't want to talk too much, but come to the – you're going to be at the games. Go watch, please. I'm, I'm, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be entertaining. Okay, Brew, what's a, success, a successful season for the Jets? Well, first of all, I mean, my goodness, Teron Smith – and now ready, I feel like, and I'm not saying they're totally wrong. I don't know. We'll see. They feel like they're getting MVP Aaron Rodgers. That's no. the attitude they're giving. Am I, do you guys agree with that? I like, they're talking like they feel like they're getting MVP I've Aaron Rodgers. horrible news for and you. And we'll see. We'll <laughs> see. Right. I know you got your list. 
300-yard games hadn't thrown. Here's a successful year. First of all, let's start with Aaron Rodgers. He plays all 17 games, all right? He throws fewer than nine interceptions, or nine or fewer interceptions. Okay. So single, single digit, digit yeah, interceptions. That's another way to say it. 30 plus TDs. Okay. I need it. 30 plus TDs, all right? 4,000 yards, which isn't a ton anymore. It's like 230 yards a game. Oh. All right? It, that's, that's all. If you play all 17 and throw for like 230, so 235 or whatever, ever, you, you get 4,000. Now, did you get over that, that type of year, He's like, <laughs> they make the playoffs. Okay. They win a game. They win a game. That's a successful Okay. Year. That's Can pretty I, good. Question, Brew. Um, why won't you hold the Jets to the same standard you hold the Cowboys? Well, why the are Cowboys they, won 12 games last the, year. No, the Jets I, won the, seven? Right, but it's the but we don't care about regular season stuff, right? It's there, the it, Jets, are, you do. Are the Jets, the Jets not, aren't S Bob. No. Really? I mean, they like oh, the, wait, should be great because your, wait, your wait, quarterback's 40. Wait a yeah, second. Your quarterback's Hold on 40. a second. No. Wait. If oh, bro. They're not they won a Super Bowl. Wait. I was one oh, years old okay, when they won great, a Super Bowl. But they've been to multiple conference championship games more recently than the Cowboys. But set that aside. That's just all how bad of the, Cowboys the justification been. of their offseason moves have been it's this year. Who cares about Tyrus right. and Sage? That if if they're all in on this year, That's they are by definition S Bob. Their players as you said, think are, are talking like they're s oh, they, they And so, think they and, are. And, and let, me, let me ask you this. Who do you, who do you trust more, Dak or Aaron? You. Forget them. You, Chris Broussard. Well, they both have their playoff issues. Right. Who do you but trust But Dak more? has his playoff issues before right. the conference championship Right. So, who do you game. trust more? Who do I trust? In the regular season? Just who to do you, win a for Super this Bowl? coming year, who do you trust more, Dak That's or Aaron? That's a tough one because I know Aaron and I haven't seen him in so long. Right. Now. Okay. So it seems like it's close. Whose defense do you like more, Brew? I kind of like the Jets more. The Jets more, exactly. Who but had, they obviously who, playing in a tougher who conference. Who had the better See, offense? You're trying to, Brew? You're trying to no, I'm fix just, me in to I'm say they're going to get to the anything. Super Bowl? I'm, no, they have a tougher conference. Trying, I know you're not going to predict Here, the Super Bowl. Here's what I'm saying, though. I'm just though. saying I feel like it's a double standard. But this, no, this is why. See, you guys still haven't gotten, gotten it. Maybe I, I need to look in the mirror. I haven't explained myself well. The Cowboys are not just S-Bob because they do have some talent and won 12 games the last few years. They're S-Bob. S-Bob because they are the Dallas Cowboys. Gotcha. Yeah. Every year they're S-Bob because they're the Cowboys. Right, they're just like the Lakers. But Every year the Lakers are LaBob. Who yeah. are S-Bob? What are the teams that are S-Bob? The Chiefs. Yes. The uh, Cowboys. The Cowboys. Uh-huh. The 49ers. Then, yeah, because recently the And the, the Jets are probably S-Bob. No. The Jets, they're all in. The, the Jets, Jets are, are all in. Their Look, quarterback Hold on. Let me say something to the Jets. It. Yeah, please. Okay. You should be thinking, S. Bob. <laughs> In your mind, you yeah. should be S. Bob because your quarterback is forty. I'm looking at it from the outside, saying there's no way they're getting to the Super Bowl. Uh-huh. If if I, looking at somebody not a Jets fan, but looking at it, I'd say, you know what, a good season would be if they get to the playoffs and win a game. Yeah, one play. That would be a good season right. for them. Though they should be thinking Super Bowl or bust. Well, they, no, Reddick, they, Smith, they're right. That's how they should no, look they, at it, and they clearly are. I mean, they are operating as – that's the point I was trying to get to. I know Brew's not going to – Brew's not a crazy person. He's not going to pick them to go to the Super Bowl. I wasn't trying to bait him into that. The point I was trying to make is they are operating as if they are. But you think and that's wrong? I think it is foolish. I think it is poor team building. I think it is one of the reasons the Jets are the Jets is because they operate as if they are in a world they're not in, and operating as if you're in that world prevents you from ever actually inhabiting that world. Mm -hmm. Operating as if if we just get Aaron Rodgers, we can make a Super Bowl while not acknowledging your head coach has proven nothing, and more importantly, you don't have a single starting offensive lineman other than AVT. That's part of the problem. I I agree with I thought they should have went for Lamar instead of Aaron, but now that you got him, try to win it. King of the Hill next. I wrote down. I'm not Aqua. mad at you. Live from New York, it's the show that is always Super Bowl or bust. It's the second <laughs> hour of First Things First. Today, the illustrious return of the most confusing segment in televised sports. Must win? <laughs> Meanwhile, J.K. Dobbins and Patrick Mahomes 
Hmm, the Mahomes have a new weapon in the backfield. That's interesting. But right now, it's Tuesday, April 2nd, which means it's time for the warmest segment in all the sports. I love that. Now, the following rankings are a rich tapestry of historical greatness, uh, confidence, and what have you done for me lateliness. In short, it's Time for another edition of King of the Hill. Indeed it is. Thank you so much for the wonderful introduction. Oh, Love Wilds and the beautiful butterfly. Oh, there's a monarch. Beautiful butterflies oh, on the screen. Oh, look at that. All right, as always, 28 people maximum. Some new additions to the hill, which means, of course, unfortunately, a few people slipped off the dew-covered hill. So, slid in the valley. Jamal Murray just been, hadn't played, yeah. so he's off. Sabonis and Siakam, they both slide as well. Now to the seventh row. These are players 21 through 28 approximately. All right, Jimmy, it's kind of time for you to start playing great. I think he's 12 points a game this last week. Uh, it's about to be playoff Jimmy time. Tyrese Halliburton and Jalen Green slipped oh. just a tiny bit, not much. And welcome to the hill, Cade Cunningham. Oh. And... That was you nice know, we were thinking, well, Cade's 34 I mean, points per game this week, and Detroit got a win, oh. so that's pretty good. Uh, and Gobert is going to, you know, we were thinking about it. Gobert's probably going to win Defensive Player of the Year. He should probably be on the hill. Sure. And he's I'm se- shocked that you put Gobert on the 17 and 12 you, this you week. I'm not a huge Gobert a fan, fan yeah. but fair is fair. Sixth row, Wimby, a 40 and 20. The Spurs 2 and 1 this week. He's got some defensive player of the year buzz. He's averaged 30, 12, and 6 for the week. He moves up. Kawhi and Jalen Brown stay where they are. Dame missed a game and is in a bit of a shooting slump, so he drops down. Darren Fox, the Kings, 1 and 2 this week. And then DeJounte had the 44 points, had a game winner, averaged 28 points per game this week. They're 2 and 1, or 3 and 1, pardon me. He moves up a bit as well. Now, we're to the real meat of it, top 15. Here it is, fifth row. Devin Booker states he had the 50-point game. He also had, I think, a 12-point game. Yeah. So he's at, like, 28 for the week. KD also stays where he is. He and Booker shooting the exact same percentage this week, almost to the shot. Steph, season on the brink. They rip off a 4-0 week. Yeah. He deals with Draymond's nonsense. He moves up. Zion and Kyrie maintain their position. Now to the top 10. Anthony Davis was a tough one, wanted to move him up, but he didn't miss a game. But 27 and 17 in the games that he played, but they lost one of those weird spots. He stays where he is. Jason Tatum, those back-to-back Hawks losses just ring in your ears a bit. And uh, so he slips a bit. Ant-Man, just 19-6-5 and five this week. And Shea, still not leading the league in assists, but still a great MVP <laughs> candidate uh, in a bit of a quiet week. Now quiet. to the top six. Third row, welcome back to the Hill, Joel wow. Embiid. Wow. The respect the reigning MVP gets is just by his nice. return being okay. announced. He gets his placement near the top of the hill. He was averaging 35 a game. He had to fall because he wasn't playing at all. He was put, reportedly maybe going to play at night now. It'll probably be later this week. But Embiid back on the hill. LeBron, we're fair on the hill. We can't move him up just because he has the first ever 40-point game on just 17 shots, six free throw attempts. We're not going to do that. And just because he's shooting 63% <laughs> from the field and 64% from three this week, not enough to move him up because he did miss a game. Yeah. And they lost the game. 26, 10, and 8 for the week for LeBron. And then Jalen Brunson. Now, they lost these last two games, but one of them, he scored 60. The other one, he had a great 30-point game. For the week, he's averaging 39 points per game. We have to move Jalen Brunson up. And now to the controversy, bro. Slipping a bit. Wow. Nikola Jokic. It's fair. They were 1-2 and this week. He shot 20% from 3 this week. He seemed to really miss Jamal Murray this week. Mm-hmm. Giannis, now he they also went one and two. Giannis averaged 33, 17, and 8, but they went one and two. So who does that leave at the top of the hill? Soon to be MVP favorite? Oh, Maybe. Wow. Luka Doncic. Undefeated this week. Ooh. 34, 11, and 8. 55-53 shooting splits, surging. You're not hearing as many arrows slung at heliocentricity that lately are you, America. <laughs> that is the latest edition of King of the Hill. Great. Well done, but I, I got to be honest, I, I, I have no clue what the, the 
criteria is. The rich tapestry. We go I, over it. Is it week. this season? Is it this month? Is it this week? Uh, wild. Last rich game. I, I don't do not do the whole listen intro, to Wilds. I think it's a rich intros? tapestry. I, rich a little bit tapestry. of confidence. What does that mean? Rich tapestry. Oh my gosh! It's, I thought you were know, English is a rich tapestry. I thought rich tapestry. Rich tapestry. A little bit of the yeah. only thing that is clear on the the hill is that for the Lakers. Winning doesn't matter. Oh. What do you mean they're Because they got two players in the top 12. They're the only two players in the top 12 whose team is not in the top eight in its conference. Well, when I say I'm it, I get saying. ripped. No, I'm, I'm just saying. saying. I'm not Because I'm not just focusing on LeBron. Uh, okay. I'm saying both of them. Oh, winning, I'm, winning, I'm, winning, winning I guess fault. winning doesn't matter. Maybe it's okay. Bruce guy Darvin Ham's fault. <laughs> it's a love affair with Torian Prince. Well, here's where I'm going to mention LeBron. I switch Jason Tatum and LeBron. Yes. All right. I got to be honest, guys. It's gone too far the other way now on Jason Tatum. Correct. Okay, you wanted him to be the MVP. I said So people not pushed fit. back and started saying, oh, he's not clutch. He can't make a shot in the last few minutes of a game. And it's just gone too far. That's true. Because over the last month, he's ele- the Celtics are 11-4. and four. He's averaged 28 points, 7 assists, 4.5 rebounds. Oh, and they beat New Orleans, good team. Milwaukee, Phoenix, these, the upstart Suns were are suddenly hot. Beating them twice, all right, in those 11 games. Now also, talking about the month. and here's the thing, I'm talking about the month, because I don't know. I'm just throwing out my stuff. Isn't all it right? April 2nd? That's a lot Jason Tatum is playing, he is a key cog on the third best defensive team in the league. And here's how key, with two other defensive players, all defensive team candidates, Drew Holiday, Derek White, Jalen Brown's a good defender too. Mm-hmm. Guess who leads them in defensive win shares while okay. you're oh, analytics? You don't folks. give a damn no, about I, defensive I do. win I'm shares. I'm a big defensive and you win shares. Know how they're All you analytics guys, you never care he is about number one win on the Celtics in defensive win shares, uh-huh. and he's number six in the NBA. You don't one care more about thing. that stat. I also care about defensive rating. No, you don't. All right? Yeah, that one. Defensive. I study all this when I'm picking my all defensive team. He, Nick, this is impressive. Fifth in the NBA among non-bigs. Because most of the guys leading the defensive ratings are big. He's fifth in the league, but he's fifth. um, Jalen Brown isn't fifth. Derek White isn't fifth. Fifth among non-bigs in defensive rating. 19th in the league. Jason Tatum is a two-way player. Go get him, Jay. Move him up. Dust, if you could somehow feed me in my ear other Celtics ranks in defensive rating before this segment's over, I'd greatly appreciate it. You'll be surprised. Uh, So here's my – I'm going to ask Wilds this question, Mm -hmm. not you, bro. (laughs) Because Wilds, our resident, let's be honest, LeBron skeptic, uh, LeBron critic, no, that's not the, fair at all. Okay, all right, that's fine. By You're not critic, a LeBron by, critic? If you mean like Siskel and Ebert type <laughs> critic where I'm like taking a very analytical eye all to right. all the nuances, then yes. So, if you guys are like super fans, no. Wilds. Non-super, how about this? Non-super fans. Okay, Wilds, let me ask you this. <laughs> Even as that, because I think you're going to help me here. Because you have trepidation about the Celtics, Correct. And about the Celtics. Well, I like I like a large point mar- uh, winning. Y- you margin. do, but but the, what you don't end a game with Jason yeah. Tatum is a little nerve wracking. Yeah, and, and the, you killed him for the turnovers. Let, yeah, you know, hundred uh, turnovers. Which yeah. Made <laughs> okay. So here's my question: Is Brew wants to switch LeBron and Tatum? Would you believe in the Celtics more this year if this moment those two guys switched teams? Oh, no. I, you, you, I'm you, asking you. You've gotten more and more I'm just, imaginative. <laughs> I'm, if uh, I was your I kindergarten Rick teacher, Rubens I would be like, a great imagination. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I would tell your parents, you hey, do plus. like throw. He just that, loves no, it. Uh, what if LeBron I, averaged 60 this year? The, you, no, that's Would you I say am, he should be I'm a, just a asking, meditator? End of game. <laughs> Answer the question. Can LeBron Answer come in the question, for the fourth counselor. quarter? I'm fourth just quarter like you. a relief pitcher? Listen. Like Tatum, time to go. He's like, all right. And then LeBron comes in, the Mariano Rivera um, music. Starts they're not all right, hold on. Wait, real quick. Real not quick. Uh, this is coming in late breaking news. Oh, really? Chris Stapps, Al Horford, and Derek White all better defensive ratings than Jason Tatum. Take that, bro. Is that Take oh, that. Wait, hold on. Chris Stapps is a big. Yeah. Horford is What's a big. What's Derek White? Who's the other? Okay, I said he's fifth. Yeah, it, Derek White is what? Third? Wait, I don't know. Okay, all right, go ahead. He's defending well. 
Defending better than LeBron this year. Well, yeah, and Luca. I tried to make yeah, that Luka. case to move him up to the MVP. I got ripped. I just am too early on this stuff. I say it, I get ripped, and then Bruce <laughs> takes it. And I say it is cogent analysis. <laughs> it makes sense. Okay, SGA is too low. What do you want SGA to do? He's averaging 30 points. Luca's at the top of the hill because Luca's <laughs> averaging 34 points. SGA's down in the corner. How's this team doing? I don't know. He's the absolute best. He's the Thunder are in first place. Well, they're in first of, place. He's averaging 30 points. With a bunch of kids. Yes, he has to be the chaperone and the leader of the team. Uh, this week, you said he had a quiet week. He did hit the game winner in the world's most famous arena, so that should count for something. I know he only scored in the teens. Now he gets to play. He was all ready for Embiid, and Embiid looked across the aisle and saw SGA there. So you know what? Why don't I push my return back to later in the week? Finally, defense. These are some real defensive stats. Not like whatever Brew was dishing. <laughs> <laughs> steals. He's uh, first in the league in steals. Deflections. I, I like these hustle stats. Contested three pointers. He's oh, that's spent. a real stat. Contested three. I mean, come the on. game's all about pace and space now. So if you can get out there and contest the three, fifth in the league, and, and he has to do all the scoring. All right. Just move him up a Listen, little bit. Here's place. the thing. I like SGA. He had a low week. I don't no think. I don't. He had think a game winning. He did have a game winning. Arena. I, I understand he had a game winner, but despite the game winner, this week SGA, 21 a night with five assists on 29% from three and 44% from the field. That is not the type of night or the type of week. And the team, yeah, they were too, pardon me. He, he Wait a second here. There we go. He also missed a couple games. That's the other thing that happened. <laughs> how, many game, how many games did they play? They played four. He missed two. You want me to move him up as part-time player this week? <laughs> Jalen Brunson. Research. He beat Jalen Dude. Brunson in Jalen Brunson's building. Jalen Brun- gets moved up. Jalen had a better game. See, he lost. While you're with me. He lost the I game. I don't understand the criteria. The tapestry. We all know it. I just disagree with it. <laughs> Welcome back to an electric show. It's time now for the most confusing segment in all of sports must win. The rules are a delicate dance of the literal and figurative. And honestly, while I usually use this time as an explainer of sorts, this is a segment you have to parse all on your own. High stakes tonight, and we start with Bruce Clippers headed to Sacramento. They've won four in a row, but no Kawhi tonight, Brew. While the Kings are trying to claw their way out of the play-in, play in. so Brew, must win. It'd be a nice win, but no. For who? Bro. Well, there you go. Um, the Clippers. <laughs> <laughs> the Clippers. All right. Okay. Clippers, not a must win. They've won three straight. Got a little moment. I know they haven't been great teams, although they beat Orlando. Um, this is the fourth game on a ro- four-game road trip. Mm-hmm. They, I don't. The NBA kind of did them dirty. They just played in Charlotte, had to fly all the way to Sacramento, and now they're playing the Kings. And Kawhi's out, so I'm just being realistic. It'd be a nice win for them to get, but not a must win. I know so, the standing good. situation, that's but that's where I'm at. So, it is not a must win for the Clippers. It is a must win for the Kings because now that Kawhi's out, you're trying to hold off the Lakers. You don't nobody. You don't want to drop to that nine line. The Lakers desperately trying to get out of that nine line, and the Kings right now are in a you know basically tied with the Suns. They're both a couple losses ahead of the Lakers, and now all of a sudden Sacramento gets the Clippers with no Kawhi. This is a game they've got to win. So it's yes, it's a must win for the Kings. No, because the Clippers are basically fine where they are. They're not going to fall to the play-in, and they're obviously not going to move above the four line at the highest. Not a must win at all for the Clippers. Okay. Brews up one nothing. Why? <laughs> must win. <laughs> Luka headed to Golden State tonight. Uh, Mavs looking for their eighth straight win. Warriors still in tenth, but now have a two-game cushion over the frisky Rockets. So, Brew, must win? I'm going to say for Dallas, it's a must win. Here's why. One, if Luka really wants to get in the MVP conversation, then they got to get 50 wins, all right? And they got to get close to Denver in the win, because that's his biggest competition, obviously, is Jokic. All right, they're also trying to get home court advantage in the first round at their fourth seed. So, this is a big game for them. For the Warriors, I mean... No. No. Okay. 
They got a two-game lead on Houston, <laughs> yeah. but they, it's close. I, I was, yeah. I'm tempted to say yes. Uh, Brew, did you not know we were doing this before the show? Yeah, yeah, no, just, no, I know, but I'm, I'm thinking out loud. Suspense going. Yeah. Uh, all right, I mean, I kind of, in the future, we might have to, like, go back and forth on who gets to go first because Brew goes first each time, and as <laughs> oddly, he nailed that exactly correct. Okay, perfect. So, this, so because it is oddly, so it is a 100% must move on. win we move on. for Luka's MVP case. And, okay. I mean, you said he nailed it 100%. Yeah, in the I mean, I so we can move on. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's right. <laughs> <laughs> Save it, but you'll give me extra time here. Okay, let, good, thanks. Let Nick go first. No, this okay. is his guy. We're doing this one for you. You're going to go first all three. It's an outrage. <laughs> this is all the reason we're doing this. That is game. my guy. It's I, 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 you. It, it's written in the bylaws I have to go first on Wimby topic. Yeah. yeah. The Nuggets are currently half game by in the Thunder. The Spurs are 34 and a half back. Wemby looking to build his case for defensive player of the year. Brew, must win? And well, San Antonio, there's no must wins at this point. But Denver, yes, an absolute must win. They're chasing the Thunder. They're trying to hold off the T Wolves. Must win. Okay. Good. So I actually nothing on Wemby there. I think right. I mean, the, the, okay. Well, I'm only going to talk about Wemby here because I think that's the only reason this game's interesting. The only reason this game's interesting is if Wemby wants a real shot at Defensive Player of the Year. He's got to have some big moments against Jokic. Oh. So the, the Spurs have played, or Wimby's played Jokic twice in his career, twice this year. Jokic in those games is 35, 9, and 7 on like 62%, okay. while Wimby is 19 and 10, which is fine, but on just 38%. What you, I think that you could have a real groundswell of, you know what? Win Binyama deserves more accolades this year than just Rookie of the Year. Something so I think there will I think people are gonna struggle with an all NBA placement brew because the team's yeah. so bad. Mm-hmm. But would they if he if all of a sudden Joker has some moments where he looks flustered, could that be enough to where Wimby has an actual shot at stealing defensive player of the year from either Rudy or like AD? That. So in that it's regard, Brew, I think that it's less about if the Spurs win and more about if Wimby can hold Jokic down a bit or make him look frustrated. I would like to see Wimby, and I know today with cross matches and picks and all that, but I'd like to see Wimby say, give me Jokic. Give me Jokic. Do you, do you see what he does? You know how you have like a Heisman moment? Do you think it would be more important if Wimby had a few big moments, big rejections or like eye-popping stuff? Or just like quietly made it difficult for Joker, that's but no great, real like standout. That's a great question because what would be more impressive if this if is if he quietly made it tough on right. Joker, like right? Rui. But but people, <laughs> <laughs> but I think for you know people just see the highlights, they just see the clips on Twitter, like punch. For it them, it stands. might right. For them, it might matter more a couple of blocks, even if Jokic has. 29 right. in a triple double, Correct. but he had when Banyama has two if impressive Wim, blocks. If Wimby has like a you know pins him against the backboard Ooh. once, and then once when yep. Jokic is trying to do his stuff, you know at the steals elbow it or steals it and you know what I mean. Well, like fast that. break, I think that could be big for Wimby. I count steals and fast breaks as a defensive play. Well, yeah, the steal is no, but and the dunk. Oh yeah, the Just fast feels break like, feels is part of. Are you game. aware of stocks? <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> One of the best segments in all sports, if not the best. It's Nick's Tears Committee meeting today. Tonight, I should say. Tonight. Let's see. Medal time. Tatum. I got a mole in there. Wow. I can't <laughs> wait. Tatum against Tonight. Brandon Miller. Falls asleep and he has a slam dunk. Uh, two of his 25. Celtics won by 14. No one cares anymore. Brandon Miller did just win Rookie of the Month for the Eastern Conference, though. Miller's? Wimby won it for the West, just edging out my guy Scoop. Bronze medal. <laughs> <laughs> Tyrese Halliburton, 27 and 13, defense. in a win over the Nets. Again, I told you that the the Nets defense is lack. <laughs> it just is. I, I I brought this up in LeBron's 40 point game. You guys weren't listening. <laughs> Silver medal, Jaron Jackson Jr. I can't remember the last time there was a Grizzly in this show in any capacity. Like I I honestly. Don't know if it's happened all season. Well, so Ja early. Yeah, ja, ja, okay, early. since Ja. Right. 47, 3, and 2. So those three steals, two blocks, Bruce. So how many stocks did he have? Five. Good job. Gold medal, Big Devin guy. Booker. 
52 <laughs> points. Wilds wanted us to lead the show with this. I said, I don't think. He did. Yeah, you know, I just, I don't you, know. You, you wanted it up. You're very like, very oh, beat the frisky 50. Pelicans, boys. It's 52 and 9 for D Book. There's half. the podium from last night in the association. Quiet. He has. He's 37 50. points at halftime. I know, but he just he does this all the time. Yeah. He's, he can like, oh, When I said we shouldn't do it, Brew, Wild started yelling at me on the morning call, didn't he? Yeah. Wild was Wild very was mad this morning. I mean, that's me. true. <laughs> Lots of news coming out of uh, Kansas City. Okay. Carson Wentz signing. You got J.K. Dobbins coming for a visit. Um, and news this afternoon is that Clyde Edwards Alaire will be back on a one year deal. Hollywood Brown. Uh, one of the newest members of the Chiefs said, Think Diamonds. He's big on this Think Diamonds yeah, thing. It's big. Uh, Nick, your reaction to all this new. I'm glad they're bringing CEH back. I'm sure it'll be super cheap. Uh, and I, you guys know I'm not big on veteran running backs who've dealt with injuries. So if they get Dobbins on, you know, close to the league minimum, so be it. But I'm not going to, you know, I am, what do they call me, Wilds? Mr. Consistency. Exactly right. And so I saw Brew reaching as if he was going to grab some goalposts, like say I move goalposts <laughs> on these things. I don't. So it, just, it would be bonus if they got it. Go ahead, Brew. JK, go to the Chargers. Wow. He, he oh. met with the Chargers recently. Yeah. He's going to get more time with the Chargers. Gus Edwards, his former teammate in Baltimore, is there. You third string in Kansas City. Oh, that's a good point. You third string. All right, you're not going to be able to up your value in Kansas City because you're not going to play much. Go to the Chargers. Would for, you agree? What is, well, Isaiah I is, you yeah, know yeah, I like but I Isaiah. Think as a, I think a healthy J.K. Dobbins would probably be ahead of Clyde. Really? Ahead of Clyde. I think he'd be second. See, I, I like Clyde. I think he'd be second. I like Clyde. Speak is up next. We'll see you tomorrow at 3 o'clock. Thanks for watching.